People bombard me with their crazy, unique ways of using bone broth. So why don't I give you my five surefire ways to use bone broth. And this is coming from a little bit more of a scientific perspective as well. So five unique ways to use bone broth. You don't just have to sip on it throughout the course of the day. There are strategic ways that you can use it to get some added benefit, no matter what your ultimate goal is. So let's get right to it. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos Tuesday, Friday, Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. But you'll also see we post just about every day because why the heck not? You want the content and I love doing this. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that weird looking little bell icon. What that's gonna do is gonna turn on notifications, make it so that whenever I go live or post a new video, you're gonna bing, get a little notification on your phone. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get right to this. I'm gonna try to make it short out of respect for your time here. So the first way that I would recommend using bone broth is to break a fast, okay? Breaking a fast is a very delicate period of time. People usually think that once they've been intermittent fasting, that they can just eat whatever they want. Well, that is somewhat the case, but you should break your fast with some bone broth. It really helps out a lot. You see, the gelatin in bone broth is a hydrophilic colloid. What that means is it draws water into your intestinal tract. And because it has so much in the way of collagen and the gelatin, it helps support the mucosal layer. When you're fasting, your gut mucosal layer actually breaks down a little bit, mainly due to dehydration and mainly due to the body sort of going through almost a cannibalistic thing. I mean, it kind of eats itself. It eats its own um, mucosal layer just out of a way of getting some more nutrients and overall collagen into the body. So really, really powerful there. But also there's a high amount of glutamine. Glutamine's gonna be really powerful for the immune system right after you break a fast. So very important there. And then of course the rehydration effect. Sure, you could drink a bunch of salt water, but you're not gonna be getting the potassium, you're not gonna be getting the magnesium that you need. The nice thing about bone broth is it has a nice delicate balance of the sodium, okay? We've got the positively charged ions that we need there for cellular function, then we've got potassium, so communicate with the sodium, and we've got magnesium, which is gonna allow the gut to relax. So very, very powerful there. The second way that you can use bone broth that a lot of people don't think about is make a fat coffee or a bulletproof bone broth out of it. Yeah, take your bone broth, Mix it up with a tablespoon of ghee, tablespoon of coconut oil, add some spices if you want to, and whip it up in a magic bullet blender. It froths up just like your keto coffee would, except it's a bone broth sort of latte. It actually tastes really darn good, and it's really perfect to do this right when you break a fast, or you can do it for breakfast, you can do it for lunch, or just something to sip on. It's just a unique way of getting those fats in, especially if you're on a ketogenic, low-carb diet. The next way is using it as a meal replacement. Now, who would have thought, right? Bone broth works well as a meal replacement if you are on a calorie restricted diet. Here's what I like to do. I like to keep my fats relatively high in the morning and then I keep them relatively high in the evening and I usually lower my fat intake middle of the day. And I'll give you the quick reasoning behind this. Keeping my fats high in the morning stimulates my ketone production. It makes it so that my body is mobilizing fat and used to using that fat. Then what I wanna do is midday, I deprive myself of fats and deprive myself of calories a little bit because then my body's in a unique state where it's already primed for using fats, but it's not getting them through the diet, so it has no choice but to pull it from the tissues and starts burning fat. So I call it my protein sandwich hypothesis, but you can do it with calories too. By having bone broth, you satiate yourself. You feel like you're having a meal but you end up not actually getting all the calories in. It ends up being very, very effective. It's a great way to take what would normally be a 600 calorie meal or so down to like a 50 calorie meal. And the cool thing is, big shout out to Kettle and Fire. Now, the realistic thing is, there's not a whole lot of good bone broth companies out there anyway, so you're probably already using Kettle and Fire because they're really the go-to when it comes down to bone broth. But now they've released these spiced bone broths. They already have flavors with them. They already have the spices added to them. My personal favorite is the lemongrass pho. I'm a huge fan of Vietnamese pho. I've always consumed it. I've always thought it was a great keto meal if you did it without the rice. Now Kettle and Fire has made it, so it's essentially a meal replacement. So we've got the lemongrass, which is a very powerful antioxidant anyway. We've got the ginger, which suppresses nuclear factor kappa B and modulates inflammation that way. And then we've got the mushroom extract, which is really, really good for estrogen modulation, estrogen overall metabolism. So not only do you get the benefit of having a lower calorie meal, but now Kettle and Fire has made it so you feel like you're having a meal. It's like you're going out to Vietnamese pho. So go ahead and check them out. There's a special link down in the description if you haven't already started using Kettle and Fire bone broth. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's move into the next one. Cook up cauliflower rice with it. People don't think of bone broth as a cooking tool, right? Like we think of regular stock for cooking. 
because it's cheap and it's simple. But we're not getting the full spectrum of collagen. We're not getting the full spectrum of minerals that we would normally get from bone broth. Cook with it, you don't need that much. So one of my favorite things to do is to make cauliflower fried rice. So I take riced cauliflower, put it in a skillet along with a little bit of ghee or a little bit of grass-fed butter. Okay, then you go ahead and you add a couple of eggs or you can scramble the eggs first if you wanna add the eggs like you would with normal fried rice. Okay, then you go ahead and you add some bone broth in once it's starting to cook up a little bit and you let that simmer. You're adding like a half a cup of bone broth. Then you can add additional spices. You can add whatever you really want to to the mix. Additionally, if you wanna add some coconut aminos to give it more of that Asian feel, that Asian flavor, you can do that. And then I usually add a little bit of like slivered almonds or some peely nuts or something like that to make it a little bit more of the full spectrum food that I'm looking for. The point is, cook with it, cook rice with it, cook cauliflower rice with it. It adds a nice bold flavor that you normally wouldn't get. Lastly, is make a pre-bed concoction with it or just drink it before bed. One of the things that's overlooked a lot with bone broth is its high amount of glycine. Glycine ultimately puts you to sleep. See, glycine cools the body. What it does is it forces a vasodilation. So it increases blood flow to specific areas of your body, which therefore causes your body to cool down. When your body cools down, it releases melatonin. It's like when the sun goes down and it cools down outside, your body cools down, your body knows to release melatonin, which puts you to sleep. This is really important. If you're having trouble sleeping or falling asleep, sipping on some warm bone broth before bed not only psychologically relaxes you because you're drinking something warm, but it physiologically has a big effect too. Lastly, it inhibits or at least lessens orexin. Okay, orexin is something that usually uh, gets your dopamine receptors going. Long story short, it calms you down, increases GABA, just makes you relax. So there you go, five unique ways to use bone broth other than just sipping on it throughout the course of the day. Big thank you again to Kettle and Fire for not only being a sponsor of this video, but giving my fans and followers and viewers a special discount on bone broth, especially if they're already consuming it, might as well save a couple bucks. If you have ideas for future videos or you wanna see anything in particular, just let me know down in the comment section below. I'll see you soon.